Nancy, it's nice to have you here. And I, I really have to admit, I'm one of those people who just doesn't like to wear scars. I never get them to stay where I put them and all that. But I thought the most interesting part of your book both books actually, was was on scarves and how versatile they are. What's your favorite length? There's so many different types to choose from. Well, there are lots of different sizes and some of the ways that we tie them apply to multiple different sizes and, and some are specific to one. Uh -huh. Probably if I had to say one that's the very most versatile, it's oh. this long oblong. These are about mm, 15 inches wide and roughly 60 inches long. One of the fun things about these scarves is that they're made very often in a satin stripe fabric, which means there's a segment that's satin and a segment that's semi-sheer and then satin and then semi-sheer. I never noticed. So one side of it is a little bit shiny, which gives it a brighter presence and a little bit dressier look. But the flip side, you still see the identical print but it's just toned down a little bit. So if you want to wear it for a more casual event or if you're someone with um, more soft coloring, the backside will work just as well and you can pick. When I'm going to work with one of those, I want the way I tied a scarf to look casually intentional or unintentionally polished. I don't want it to be too prissy, but I don't want it to be a big mess either. And an easy way to obtain that is just to softly fold it in thirds lengthwise okay. with the shiny or the matte side out, your choice. Whichever. But now you're only seeing one. And do you see how that controls the fullness of the mm -hmm. scarf? So whatever we yeah. do with it from this point on is going to be more intentional looking. Now, the very easiest thing to do is just wear it long around your neck. And what most people do to secure that is tie it with a square knot. The problem with the square knot is that it makes the ends kind of wonk out funny, oh. so it doesn't have the polish I like. The way to correct that is so easy that when I show it to people, they always want to sort of slap me because they're like, <laughs> oh my well, gosh. how did I Why not did I already know this? But the secret is that you tie just a plain overhand knot that's okay. just a knot it's not you don't have to be a girl scout you just tie a knot in it leave the knot loose feed the other end through and now do you see how it hangs perfectly straight now when you do that you also want to stagger the ends so they're two to three inches offset and why is that the, the reason for that is if you line them up now you're getting a hard horizontal line right on your tummy which is not where most people want to create a focal point by staggering them, now the visual kind of climbs the staircase and moves upward. Uh -huh. It's more interesting. The other thing to watch for with this one is where that knot comes to rest on your body. If you feel like Mother Nature didn't give you quite as much up top as you would like, you just line up the knot right in a line with the fullest part of your bust, and it visually gives you an extra cup size. Okay. And if the last thing you want on earth is an extra cup size, just be Pull sure that you higher. bring the knot up a little higher. Now, how easy is that? Okay. Another real favorite way to wear the, this kind of scarf is to bring the two ends together. We're not offsetting them this time. Uh -huh. And we have a loop on the other side and you simply bring it around your neck and slide it through. And mm -hmm. most everybody knows that one. So I wanna show you two little variations that make that more effective. The first one, is to start the same way. The ends are together, you have a loop, but then you wanna just twist, twist your it. finger, almost like an egg beater to um, uh -huh. make that fabric now twisted tight on itself. Uh -huh. Then you bring it around your neckline. You have to work a little harder to get the loop open to pull the ends through. Then the ends will untwist and look fluffy. It's going to stay a whole lot better because that loop is mm -hmm. tighter. And now it's compacted around your neck. Sometimes, especially women who don't have a lot of neck length, don't uh -huh. like the other one because it feels like too much up under their chin. Uh -huh. And this reduces it. And you can wear that at center front or you can oh, kick it, it to over side. to one side, which gives you a nice horizontal emphasis for your shoulders. I will tell you though, that you'll want to sneak in with a little safety pin 
and pin that from underneath. Otherwise, you'll spend your whole day doing this, and <laughs> right. you'll have one upper arm that's much more toned than the other one, and that would that would never work. Now, if we were going to to put a cardigan on, say later, mm -hmm. or a, a jacket, uh, would it be better to wear it hanging down the scarf? or wear it to the side, or would it matter? Well, you would always do want to play with how the way you've tied your scarf fits into your neckline. So for instance, when I'm using one of these drapey cardigans like this navy one, I don't want more drape of uh -huh. a scarf in with Fights. the drape of the cardigan. I want to tie it some way that's going to be up high. The nice thing about the longer presence like this mm -hmm. is that it just gives you that sure. vertical. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, so good you. reasons to approach that either way. Then probably if I had a second favorite, it's this little bandana size. This That's is about an 18 to 20 inch square. This one happens to be a sheer chiffon fabric. They come in this more satiny kind of fabric mm -hmm. too. And one of my very favorite ways to wear a scarf like this is to fold it in half on the diagonal. And then I'm going to roll, roll it, it from the point to the fold. I should mention while we're doing this that you would definitely come back and cut um. off that little tag. It's not a mattress. The <laughs> FTC or we're whoever to is not off. going to come in and harm you. <laughs> so now we have sort of a long spaghetti strand, sort of. Uh -huh. So then I'm going to tie a soft little knot, just my plain overhand knot like we did before. Mm -hmm work that down so it hits at the middle Sittle. and now I can tie those ends in a square uh -huh. knot behind my neck and let it hang a lot like mm -hmm. a necklace. And that would be pretty with a cardigan over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one that doesn't fight with almost any neckline. Now a little trick, again someone with a shorter neck or a thicker neck would want to be sure that that was going to hang far enough down and the secret for that is when you tie the free corners behind your back, you want to tie, loop them through, and then instead of pulling the ends to tighten up that knot, hold on to the ends, grab the body of the scarf with your second and third fingers, and pull oh, that. Pull so now scarf, you've taken the up ends. the absolute least amount of the scarf. Mm. Another sneaky thing about this, this is one that clients really love, is that once you've tied it, it'll slip off and on over your head oh. without ever having to tie it again for your whole life. So <laughs> it's not unusual for me to come back to a client's closet for a seasonal update and find all her scarves tied just the way I tied them <laughs> okay. and hanging on little cup hooks on the back of her closet door so she doesn't have to think about it. Okay. I, I do want to ahead. show you one other quick little trick, and I hope I haven't tied this so snug that I can't undo it. You want me to work on that? Um, no, I think I got it. You got it. it. There we go. Um, I had a email from a client saying, I love all the fun things you're doing with jewelry, but I can't wear metal jewelry. Um, I can't wear a chain around my neck. What uh -huh. else could I do? And I realized that I could take these pendants, pendants. which you can mm -hmm. find at craft and hobby stores at like Michael's in their jewelry making department. And if the bail, the part that goes around the chain, has enough room in it, oh, you, you create can a just necklace. slide that mm -hmm. right onto that same little scarf and make it a necklace. How slick is what that? A great idea. And again, it's a necklace that's completely length adjustable uh -huh. just based on how you tie the scarf. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, we're seeing a lot more of these um, larger squares. This is about oh. a 28 inch, 28 to mm -hmm. 30 inch. And these don't have as many different ways to wear them, but the way, ways that you do them are so lovely. They often are printed with a border and a design mm -hmm. that sort of goes around a central motif. So we folded it in half mm -hmm. and then we're folding it on the diagonal and picking up two opposite corners this way. So now you get this shape that I don't think there's even a name for. <laughs> and then we're going to bring it around our neck like this. I want to be sure oh, that the corner like that really neckline. that really features the motifs is at the center front. Uh -huh. And then you simply knot it at the side. Okay. 
and this pretty. one stays weighted so you really probably don't need to pin it mm -hmm. underneath the shoulder so that's one really fun choice with that and then I see that you're hanging on to my rubber band uh -huh. <laughs> for the rubber band trick with this size scarf which by the way you also can do very readily with the smaller squares but for this one we're bringing the four corners together if there's a noticeable right and wrong side to the scarf, you want the right side to be on the inside, inside. Okay. of this little pouch that we're making here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to reach in through the fold and I'm going to point my finger point right down into it. the very uh -huh. center point of the scarf. And then I'm going to take my rubber band and rubber band over my finger like this. That's a chic look, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> and then slide it off. And now it's gathering the fabric into the center so that when we go back and flip it to the right oh. side, uh -huh. I can pick up two adjacent corners and, get, and tie them behind my back and get this gorgeous rich drape uh -huh. that really showcases the beautiful design on the border print of that scarf. Now I see why we wanted the, the right, right side inside that fold. It seems so counterintuitive. Uh -huh. Everything about this seems backwards until uh -huh. you get to the point that you're actually wearing it. <laughs> okay. And now probably the newest look in scarves are these big oversized ones. They're generally about 72 inches long. Um, the width can vary from about 24 to 36 inches wide. Okay. And when you're choosing scarves in this size range, you want to be sure that the fabric is really lightweight and fluffy. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's going to give you an awful lot of volume. But the easiest way to wear one of these is to start with it a little off, about one-third, mm -hmm. two-thirds. You can take the long length and wrap uh -huh. that back around your neck. And now it's going to hang this way. And if you want that to be a little less poofy under your chin, you just bring the ends from the front to the back through I the loop. I told you earlier you were like, like a that. magician. <laughs> it is. It's like, what are we going to pull out of our hat next? Uh -huh. But I'm, I'm also an older, I'm a boomer mus magician. That, <laughs> say that three times fast. Um, so for this hotter, hipper, new look, um, I had to go to my millennial daughters and say, wait, why do your big scarves always look better than mine? And they showed me that the trick is instead of starting with the ends gathered up straight across like this, uh -huh. pick up one corner and let oh. the whole scarf fall on the diagonal. Oh. So do you see how yes. now you get a much more interesting drape and the bulk of the scarf tapers to nothing at uh -huh. the end? So watch when I do that very same double wrap. But do you see how much oh, more yeah. gracefully mm -hmm. that falls? So it, that's apparently a good that's just tip. one way that it really pays to have children. <laughs> For all that effort that you put into raising them, then they can show you how to wear your scarves in a more young and updated way. Well, thank you very much, Nancy, for showing these. And in your book, it's, it's got very good pictures and step details, by step by step. So Thank have we converted you to at least go home and I'm try? I'm going to go try. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, too, a quick little trick for how to store your scarves so you'll get back and wear them. If you take one of the tubular coat hangers, and I don't have one right here, but we're going to pretend that my arm is a tubular coat hanger, and you drape the scarf with the fold edge like that over the hanger, Oh. Pull the end of it down through, and you can stack a dozen or more of them onto just one tubular coat hanger and keep them where you see them. Because if you oh, don't no, see them, they're in a I guarantee you're <laughs> not going to wear them. So not. I'm going to follow up and check and back check in a me. few weeks yeah, okay. and see how you're doing with modifying your wardrobe to include some of the great scarves that you tell me you have wadded up in Wad a drawer. Up. <laughs> I never will tell. Thank you very much, Nancy.